It's bloody on the internet, isn't it? One of these, uh, these bloody podcast things. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome along to another edition of the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Hooray! Is this the start? Or this is the, yeah, this this is is the, the beginning start. of it, yeah. yeah. Oh, Are you wow. still waiting to live your dream of where you get to start the podcast? I'm, uh, <laughs> Not today, sucker. <laughs> Let's play a game where we all have to be cartoon versions of ourselves, and you get to choose what sort of cartoon animal you are, and then do your voice. Just a quick note on this. This is not an idea Sharon just thought up. We already had a go at this, but it just turned out that the, Sharon was like, everybody have a go, and we'll all have a turn. Sharon just wanted to do them all and never give us a turn. So if you do this, are you going to do one and then no, stop I've, this time? I've, I've mastered my voice this okay, time. Okay, so you get one. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Last time we had to suffer through eight terrible versions of um, Shaz It wasn't Dog. eight, it was four. Look at your cute little stupid face. Okay, go. Go <laughs> for like it. A Look at your own mark. stupid face. <laughs> go. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is... <laughs> Shut up. Hello, everybody. My name is Shaz Dog, and I like to go to the park with my friends and steal other people's water, and sometimes I just have casual sex with strangers. No, no. no. <laughs> it always goes a bit weird. <laughs> Shaz Dog, thank you very much. Clint, what you think about thank this, you, Shaz Dog. Dog. <laughs> thank you, Shaz Dog. Clint, you're up. Okay. Um, my character um, it doesn't really have a name, but he's uh, a fish who works in IT, okay. and he's, like, he's, he's not that into his life. Does he speak whale? Um, no, he speaks fish. He speaks real okay. real language. Um, but like, he's, his job's not really going anywhere, and he can tell you about it. Hi. He does speak well. Hi. It's Earl here. <laughs> it was a hard day at the IT desk today, not least of all because I've got fins and not fingers and I couldn't log <laughs> any jobs. But, you know, sometimes I just feel that I'm treading water. <laughs> That was you really just, good. You just sound like um, people that work in our IT department. <laughs> Actual. Guy, um, your turn. I can't top that. It's annoying that I'm last. Okay. My guy's name... Well, come on, you big idiot. My, guy, my guy's name is Gary. He is the world's first Nathandriel. And he can't ne- say Nathandriel right. Ne- Neanderthal? Ne- ne- Neanderthal. Yeah. So you're just being your dad. Hello. This is <laughs> Gary. I'm in my cave right now, but sometimes I like to go outside and try and invent fire. Don't ask me no how I know it's cold fire because it hasn't been invented yet. Now suck my cock. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening to the podcast. <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. We've got some great news, especially for fans of Margot Robbie. Now, if you don't know who Margot Robbie is, she used to play Donna on Neighbours, and this is a little clip for on Neighbours. Okay, then look me in the eye right now and tell me you don't love me. This is dumb. <laughs> That was such a good episode. That was when Ringo <laughs> told Don and he loved her and they got together and they got married and then Ringo died. <laughs> but Margot Robbie Was is, she the man or the or the woman? She was the woman. So she, she was sh- Donna. She said that, like, those two words. Yes. This was dumb. This was dumb. She's just basically just a mean baby. She's awesome. And she is most recently known for her role as the Duchess on The Wolf of Wall Street, who was Leonardo DiCaprio's second wife. Oh, no. No, Daddy doesn't even get to touch Mommy for a very, very... Very long time. Oh my god, that scene that you've chosen there as well. So oh my god. hot. Oh my god. Well, guy hasn't seen Wolf of Wall Street, so I just sound like a massive pervert, and I am. But <laughs> she, she's her, ugh, the Duchess on that movie. She's mind blowing. She is so hot. I've got an album of her on my phone, and so when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, too tired to go to the gym. I look at pictures of Margot Robbie. I'm like, get up and go to the gym, girl. You're never gonna look like Margot Robbie. Really? Yeah. She's who I look at. She is so beautiful, and she's hilarious to, to interview as well. She is in New Zealand at the moment, I've heard. Yes, she is here because she is filming a movie with Chris Pine called Z for Zachary Ark, and she's on Banks Peninsula. Unbelievable. And she's been here for a couple of days now, and she has dyed her hair brown if you're trying to look out for her. But we want to get her on our show, and we're not having any luck going through the right channels. And I looked her up on Twitter, and she only has 75,000 followers, which only. means... <laughs> that for for an international celebrity, that like, is low. That's yeah. very low. Like for example, Lord almost has a million. And wow. what we want to do is we want to try and get Margot Robbie on our show. And if you help us out, then you could win one thousand dollars. 
Whoa, whoa. So, so how are we going to do this? We give $1,000. I uh, sweet talk to the boss, and the boss is a massive fan of Margaret So he'll Robbie. give you money, but he won't <laughs> give Guy any money for catching a hat. No. <laughs> so what we want you to do is we want you to go on Twitter and tweet her. So it's at Margot Robbie. That's M-A-R-G-O-T, and then Robbie, R-O-B-B-I-E. And tell her to call the Gla- Guy, Clint, and Sharon show. And if you use the hashtag Margot Call the Edge, then that is where we're going to find the people. If she does end up on our f- on our show, we will look on that hashtag. Hashtag, and we will choose one of those people to win a thousand dollars. Basically, find Ro- Margaret Robbie for us, and you will be the king of the world for do, a day or do, queen. Do our legwork, and we'll give you a thousand dollars for it. <laughs> no, we're trying as well. It's it's very similar to when JJ, Mike, and Dom. Well, it's exactly the same. When JJ, Mike, and Dom <laughs> went on their bounty to get Russell Crowe and also Tom Cruise. So Tom Cruise, the Tom Cruise one worked. By the way, they got Tom Cruise on the show when he was here to film Last Samurai, and they Amazing. also got uh, they also got Russell Crowe as well. So if you can Less get us amazing. Margot Robbie, you could score yourself one thousand dollars so please help us out i'm into this i want to get her on the show i would love to meet her we've put a bounty on her head and the people of new zealand will respond i know it's more likely that she gets on the phone but she's got to leave the country at some stage so the airport's in Auckland. there's only one one way out margo and i'm standing at the airport (laughs) (laughs) use those hashtags that sharon's just talked about she's going to put the info up on our facebook page as well and we'll tweet about it and we'll try and get margo robbie on the show we're on a mission to get margo robbie who is the star that was played the second wife of leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street on our show. The Duchess. You've got to refer to her as the Duchess. The Duchess, sorry. The Duchess. We are going to give away $1,000 to the person that can get Margot to call our show. And you could be doing this on Twitter as well just by using the hashtag, hashtag Margot Call the Edge. You just need to tweet her and tell her to call our show. How do you spell Margot? So Margot is M-A-R-G-O-T. So Margot. Oh, that silent T. It gets you every time. That's how you do it. So if you want to tweet her, just look her up on uh, Twitter, but otherwise her name is just at Margot Robbie so tweet away and let's try and get her on our show cool. but we've had some people call in that are quite excited about this good afternoon Sarah hi hi what do you think about Margot Robbie being in New Zealand oh my god she is honestly like the hottest girl that I have come across in so long and I'm not even lesbian <laughs> but like honestly she is incredible and if you guys got her on the show I would just say you guys absolute legends oh, are, you, are you sure you're not a lesbian I'm 100%. A little bit lesbian, though, eh? A little bit. God, this, yeah. you guys are distracting from the from the conversation. Now, we need to brainstorm this about this, tried? Sarah. Um, how do you think, what's some ideas that we could do apart from using Twitter and Facebook to get Margot on the show? Um, I don't know. Like, maybe you could get an aeroplane to fly over where she's <laughs> filming or something with a banner? I don't know. Great idea. That is an awesome idea. We could get like a one of those like signs that go behind the plane to go over Banks Peninsula or like even what, just around Auckland because then people can use the hashtag. Like what the strip clubs in Auckland do to get people to go to their strip clubs, fly a plane over everybody. That is a really good idea, Sarah. And for your uh, contribution, we're going to send you along to the movies to see Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, okay? Oh, sweet. Thanks. No cool. worries. Thanks All so right. much for calling. And if you want to head along to that, it's going to be in cinemas on the 30th of January, but it is R16. I, re- I really like the idea of using like old school forms of communication. Like we could smoke, we could get some smoke signals and send them her away. <laughs> we could um, try and, uh, what's that tappity tap message? We could try Morse and code. Morse code her. We could put um, a letter in the personals columns of the newspaper. <gasps> we should, okay, okay, okay. Message in a bottle. <laughs> She's going to meet near water. Yeah. We'll send a message in the bottle. Or I like your newspaper idea, Clint. We'll put an, an ad in the paper that's like, wanted actress, note, must have experience in Wolf of Wall Street movie. <laughs> <laughs> Margot's like, this is the job for me. <laughs> or just a massive one-page ad of her saying, Margot, call us. We're going to follow this one and see if we can get her on the show. We'd love you to use that hashtag, uh, Margot, call the edge, or just tweet at her and let her know that, that we're keen for a bit because she hasn't heard it from us. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not keen for a bit. We're keen for, keep a, a, bit of her for an on the interview. Show. Yeah. Keep a bit of her yeah. on the show. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. I stayed in a Flash hotel on the weekend. Well, stop bragging Clint's, about it. Clint stayed there as well. Yeah, and we didn't even have to share a room. We. I don't normally stay in Flash hotels. Normally, I, I when I travel, I go to stand up. Com- I do stand up comedy clubs, and I stay in like the dingiest, crappest. Last time I went to Wellington, no crap. I stayed in a place where I'm sure the units were on a slant. Like you could put a marble at one end and roll it down. Was that the oh. one out by the um, military base <laughs> that you showed us? <laughs> it wasn't out in Trentham, but it was. It was in town. But I don't want to say what it is. I don't want to hurt their business. But uh, I wouldn't recommend staying there. It's the kind of place you go there and you're like, I'm sure the only 
time this is used is for people who pick up call girls. Yeah. That's pretty much the only purpose. So anyway, we were the opposite to this this time. We got put up to the nines, <laughs> and we were mean, very lucky. We didn't pick up any call girls. That's why yeah. we were the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got put up in a really nice hotel. You don't need a call girl when you've got a really nice hotel. And uh, we had a great time. There was um, <laughs> those um, little those little stickers, Sharon. Do you know those ones where they um, put it like, um, we're an environmentally conscious hotel, so put this sticker on the bed if you don't want us to change the sheets. Yes. It's a bit awkward, though, that sticker, though, because um, it, you may as well make a sticker. If you do put it on the bed, it may as well just say, look, guys, I've pissed the beds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to pretend it's for uh, non-environmental reasons, but really, yeah, uh, that's an awkward sticker. But anyway, one thing I noticed about these hotels is the... Um, uh, all the little luxuries they had, all the weird little details they mm. did. They, for example, they had a pillow menu. Oh, I love pillow menus. A menu for the pillow. How ridiculous is that, yeah, though? I thought that was oh, ridiculous as well. People have different preferences. Some people have bad necks. Some people like a soft pillow. Some people like a hard pillow. There's nothing worse than going to a hotel when you like a hard pillow and it's just like you put your head on and your head goes straight through the pillow. <laughs> I love a good pillow menu. I feel like you, if you've got a pillow menu, you've got too much money. What about the weird bathroom situation? <laughs> so this hotel that we were in, it had so it had the, the room, and then there's like couch. The room was really nice, and then it had a really nice bathroom as well. Yeah. But then it had a glass window in the shower, which is fine. Which is fine. That's a common hotel technique. You you to make the the bathroom seem bigger, you put but a window the, on it. The window looks out into the room. I didn't think it was that common. I found it pretty weird. It's the first one I'd had. So looks someone, into the room. Yeah. So yeah. someone, if you're having a shower or using the toilet, someone can sit in the room and watch you like you're on some weird reality which TV show. Which is exactly the point. But <laughs> then there's this thing where if you don't want to be watched, you put the blind down. There's a blind, which is fine, which is great. Again, but the blind <laughs> was on the bedroom side of the window so the only person who can open or close the blind is not the person in the shower you can do that before you go in that's why they have those so you can I know I know but if I'm out there I can be like I want to take a look at Sharon <laughs> so I can go and open the thing it's so you can have sexy showers and also <laughs> you can have a bath while watching the TV that's in the lounge that's why they have those windows there mm. how often do you have a sexy shower though really like um, every time you're in a hotel I'm room. there scrubbing my armpit and someone like lifts up the window and they're like ooh sexy if you're in the hotel and you're staying with your loved one nine times out of ten you're there to have some fun <laughs> i'm scared my dad's listening I'm, I'm not but like you know i'm just saying put the curtain on the toilet side so the person in the shower <laughs> can make up their mind for themselves how sexy they want to be it was a definite look into how the other half live <laughs> that's for sure well hey. i'm obviously got a, a an, an expensive taste because i love me a shower window and a pillow and a menu, menu. <laughs> guys shannon and clint itch Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you, and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shaz Dogs Love Shack. Love. Oh. First of all, stop freaking calling it Shaz Dogs Love Shack. <laughs> Sorry, Shaz Dog. Oh, my name is Sharon, so calling me Shaz Dog. Oh. Honestly, I went home to Wellington this weekend, and my mum's like, what the hell is a Shaz Dog, Sherry? And I'm like... <laughs> Sherry, she called you Sherry. She would call you Sherry. <laughs> Sherry. No, Sherry. Only, my, only my grandparents and my parents are allowed to call me that. Sherry's a Shaz Dog. Anyway, welcome to Sharon's Love Line. This is where I'm going to help you with your love. And we're getting a whole lot of texts through on 3343. And because I am a GB, I am going through and replying to as many of these as I possibly can. And I would just like to say each week I will have somebody endorsing Love Line. And I have got a really good one this week endorsing how amazing I am. I endorse Sharon because she told me how to get laid far more often. And it worked! Yay! That is our boss by the sounds of it. <laughs> That's disgusting. Gross. But hey, I help out every tragic loser. Hey. Yeah, and it's with his it's with his wife. <laughs> That's <laughs> even grosser. I don't judge or discriminate who I give advice to. If somebody <laughs> needs some advice on their love life, you holler at a girl and I'll help you out. All right, just quickly to give you an example, Guy is going to hit you with a love, uh, love line advice question and you're going to give him some advice. Sharon, since breaking up with my ex, I've been trying to get back on the dating scene. But I always get to the point where a guy is hooked and then I'm bored. WTF is wrong with me. To me, it sounds like you're genuinely not over your... Uh ex-boyfriend and deep down you still like your ex-boyfriend you're still point. comparing every new person to things that he may be used to do so maybe just go single for a while have a few drunk patches if you want to still you know keep up your skills but I just think that she's not over her ex-boyfriend is it that or does she just need to stop trying to date so many guys and just be single for a while she genuinely does need to be single mm. for a while but I reckon deep down you won't be over your ex and you'll always remember little bits and pieces that they did can I can I do this one this <laughs> sure Shaz dog. Met this chick off Tinder a few months back. She's got her 
sock, brackets, some other C kid, calling me dad. I want a gap, but she's a good root. Cheers, Horano. Oh, my God. <laughs> my solution to that, Horano, is punch yourself in the face. <laughs> Stop texting the love line. This is for love, not losers. L- right. Massive losers. We've got some callers on the phone as well. Sapphire, what's your question? Sapphire, are you there? Oh, that's Aww. unfortunate. Sapphire's, do you want to just hear what Sapphire's question what was? What was Sapphire's question? Sapphire's question was, what do you think I should do if I think my boyfriend might be gay? Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> I've, I've, I've come across a lot of things. I've never come across that. Really? I don't know. You've got a kind of... What do you mean, really? I just thought you'd encountered that in your lifetime. Oh, no, no. Actually, I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, shit, I didn't even see it coming when that happened. Um, I would just maybe set him up in a scenario and make a, fa- a fake Facebook account of like what? a really hard turn of message him and if what? he's into it, then you know. Is that your advice? This is the yeah. worst advice I've ever hey, heard. Hey, it worked for me when I thought that I had a hunch. Catfish him. I, a, I, I had to catfish somebody once to catch them cheating, this and it is, totally worked. Why don't you just <laughs> cheating? She's worried he might be gay. Yeah, She's but if he shows his sexuality, if she shows interest, if she tries to add him as a friend and he confirms the thing, then you know that he wants to look at his pictures. Or shocking. Or get him to meet Mike Peru, and then we'll see. We did set up at the start of this feature that some of Sharon's advice was psychopathic, <laughs> so you do need to take that into account with a pinch of salt when you do it. All right, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Sharon's Dog's Love Shack. Love. Sharon's Love Line is open for business. So thank you all for your texts. I'm replying to as many as I possibly can. We've got some more people on the phone. Abby, what is your question? So I'm wondering, where does a 22-year-old find a date these days? 22 years old. Well, what, what city are you okay. in? Okay. And Hamilton, this so is, oh. that pretty much rolls out clubs. This is Sharon's love line, so you shush over there. Just interesting. I think Guy was going to put Abby, himself forward. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, as someone that got married when they were 26 and probably should have got amongst it a little bit more, I would say stop worrying about finding someone to date all the time. Honestly, just go out and have fun and you'll find love in the weirdest places. And not like in a bad way, but in the places you don't realise it is, that is where it actually is. That and stop going to really, really crappy seedy bars. Because you won't. You're not <laughs> In gonna, Hamilton, there's no other choice. <laughs> you're not going to find. You're not going to find someone drunk on the floor of the outback. So just find different places to go. Otherwise, um, Tinder is actually really good. You can find a, lo- a lot of creeps on there. But I've got a few friends that have uh, found legitimate boyfriends really? on Tinder. Really, I thought Tinder was just for a, a tap and gap. You can t- get a lot of tap and gaps on Tinder. But I've got about two or three friends now that have legit girlfriends and boyfriends from Tinder. It was real awkward when I was um, looking at Tinder for research purposes one time, and I found one of the girls from the Edge office. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing on here? No, it is actually worth a go, but definitely just get out and stop looking for it and you'll probably meet somebody nicer. Join a social netball I'll team. I'll have to give it a go. Join a social, social netball team. team. Oh my netball. God. Netball. Don't, don't listen to him. That's where all the babes are. Don't listen to him. I'm there. Ben, up. what is... <laughs> how, hang on a second. How many girls have you picked up at social netball? Not any at the moment, exactly. but I'm, wor- I'm working on it. <laughs> exactly. Ben, what's your question? Ben. No, no, Ben. Oh, what was Ben's question? How do you avoid the friend zone? Friend zone's easy. As soon as you get in there, you just can't be too friendly. You've got to stay flirty. You've got to, like, just try and get that drunken pash sometimes. You, get get and creepy as in the I friend said, zone. Get that drunken pash sometimes. As I said, you've got to get the play fight, man. Nobody gets amongst the play fight. You don't play fight with your friends. You play fight with friends <laughs> that you want to touch. So if you don't want to get in the friend zone, initiate a play fight, accidentally grab her breast. I don't know, but just... I, I, do you know what I, my advice there is? <laughs> try and not... This is from a, a loser who can't get any dates so doesn't know anything. But try and hang out with them one-on-one as opposed to with friends. That's my hot tip. Well, also, would... indoor netball, again, works well for everything. <laughs> it does not. It does not at all. And, oh, Stacey. Something's wrong with the phones one's today. One's scared and they hang up. Yeah. Who one was... How, what did he, she want? She wanted to know how she could talk her boyfriend into a threesome. You don't have to talk him into it, babe. He's going to be into it either what? way. Hang on. Was she, <laughs> why did you hang up, woman? That was her question. She wanted to talk her woman. partner into having uh, an, an extra partner in the bedroom. You do not need to talk a dude into that. No way. Just be you like, just say, happy birthday for the next 15 years of your life. <laughs> this is what I got you. <laughs> it's a threesome. Exactly. And that has been another edition of Sharon's Love Line with tidbits from Guy about indoor netball. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Grammy Award winner. We can finally say that. Lord arrived back in the country today. I was there and I did a story for Jono and Ben. 
Do you guys still do um, free pensioners' coffees? Oh, yes, we do. Could I get one free pensioners' coffee, please? Yep. Hi, I'm Guy Williams, reporting live from McDonald's Auckland Airport, where I'm waiting for Lords to come back from the Grammys and also get a sausage and egg McMuffins. Did you do this morning's report from McDonald's? <laughs> it started at McDonald's where every good report starts. That's the great thing about waiting for celebs to come back from the airport. So hang on, I think, feel like you just did a plug for McDonald's, which you always <laughs> mock us about doing sly plugs for businesses. I'm not getting sweet McDonald's um, Did you get a royalties. coffee? I think you're getting you, sausage no. and egg, egg McMuffin payola. It was actually real awkward because we filmed a couple of intros outside McDonald's and uh, McDonald's came out and got quite angry at us. Really? Yeah, but did you get a sausage and McMuffin? No. Lies. I know. I honestly didn't. What, what, sort of, what sort of loser do you think I am? Well. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this has been the big story today. It's created mm. a lot of debate because Lord was welcomed by a couple of fans in New Zealand media. And it was reported in the media that it was hundreds. I was there. It was 10. What, really? It was literally, I'd say the number of cameras wouldn't have been more than 20. Yeah. And then, I mean, it would, it would be, there was, like, there was over 100 people there, but a lot of them are just waiting for other people as well. It was actually a disappointing welcome, if anything. Yeah. And uh, I was just there. It was pretty cool. I was amongst the, the, the 10 media there, elbowing my way to the front and um, bantering with local media. She's probably taking a while because she's got to get her, her Grammy through customs, eh, guys? <laughs> oh, me out. oh, my God. Knocked you out with that classic gag. <laughs> Who was that? So the, that was the um, TV One breakfast lady. <laughs> said, I, I almost knocked her out <laughs> with the funniness of that gag. No, I you think with your flailing arm. <laughs> so anyway, the, what, the reason I want to bring this up is because after this happened, Lord went on Twitter to have a bit of a rant. And I'll share some of it with you. She said, New Zealand media almost pushed over myself and my family at the airport this morning in order to get their shots. Bit of a sad welcome to New Zealand, if, if, if I'm honest. She then went to say... She, she, she then went to say, I understand that people of note, referring to herself as a person of note, are supposedly fair game to everyone to photograph and film, but that doesn't make it acceptable. So this kind of made me feel bad because I was there at part of the media welcome party and she felt really bad in a welcome back to New Zealand. And then I listened back to the audio that I got and I was like, it was low key as crap. The only thing wrong with it was my terrible question at the end. <laughs> and if you want to hear it, this is the actual audio of what it sounded like when Lord came back to New Zealand. This is a little bit hard to hear, but you can pick up what's happening in the background. <laughs> She'll come out. Hi. Hello. 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 How are you? How are you? Good. How do you think this will change things for you? I mean, it seems like uh, it's gone from a musical thing to almost like a national hero situation. Well, I did gain like 200,000 Twitter followers, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, and what's next now? You've got a performance tonight? I do. I have a performance tonight, which will be really fun. Okay. What was the movie on the plane? Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. You, you. you ended the press conference. <laughs> she actually, after I asked her what the movie on the plane was, she actually left. Yeah, I, I she saw this on the Herald website, the, the video, because she sort of storms off and there's, <laughs> I heard in the background you go, what was the movie you watched on the plane? And then you just hear another one of the serious journalists go, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're an embarrassment. This is why you get banned from so many press conferences. I was, um, I was, that was probably the worst thing that happened. So just to let people know that we didn't hound Lord at all. I just asked her a terribly lame question. And for that, New Zealand, I apologise. Have you got to the bottom of it yet? Have I got to the bottom of the movie? No, I, her manager watched Caddyshack, which I was like, who watches Caddyshack on a plane? <laughs> and uh, Lord, still unknown, guys. So the saga continues. She is back in Auckland now, back in New Zealand. She performs her tri uh, triumphant gig down in Silo Park today as kind of the follow up to that laneway gig that was on the other day. Just uh, heard from the guy who's running that show. There are still some tickets left. So if you want to go and see Lord tonight, and this would be the time to see her two days after winning the Grammys, you can purchase some tickets through the laneway website. I think they're about 69 bucks. Uh, you can grab yourself some tickets and go down and <laughs> 69, see. 69, classic gag. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Live in Auckland tonight. It's the edge. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. It's time for New Zealand's favourite low cost game show. Win. Clint. Come. Welcome to the show, guys. If you've just joined us and you're not sure what's going on at the moment, basically, yesterday, Sharon had the genius idea of ripping off 
a Paul a Henry segment, right? He gives he does nine and ten, yeah. and gives away a new Kia car. Yeah, a Unfortunately, new Kia, a new Kia car. We don't have that sort of budget on this show. So what we did is, and Sharon had this great idea to give away Clint's car. It's a 1996 Honda Accord, and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> if you would like to see this, is on our Facebook page now. Go look up the Edge Afternoons with Guy, Sharon, and Clint. It's red. It's covered it's in maroon. It's if you covered want to be in specific. scratches. It's got it's got seats. It's it got has dents. a cup holder. The window doesn't work. It, it gets a warrant, and that's all you need in a it, car. It's it a gets, beauty car. It gets two radio stations and has no aerial. And it was Guy's this idea. This is my car, by the way. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure, sure. It's a piece sure, of crap, but look, it's my piece of crap. No one likes to have a whinge. Too much of this, mate. Just be <laughs> quiet. It was Guy's idea that we give everyone not one. But three chances to have a go at this. So we've got three callers on the phone right three, now. I thought we agreed on just one. So okay, okay, we'll do one, we'll do so, one. So basically, the way this game works, if you don't know, and I hope the callers are listening to this because this is the challenge, you've got to say nine of a topic that I specify in ten seconds. It's that easy. You've just got to list nine of a thing. Yesterday we did Native Birds, like mm-hmm. Paul Henry showed. Today I've got some different ideas. And if you do it, you win Clint's car. Let's play the game. Hey, nine and ten. <laughs> <laughs> Haley, calling up from Wellington on 0800 The Edge. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I am. Okay, here we go. What is your question, Guy? Haley, your topic is name nine insects. Okay, a cicada, an ant, a moth, a. <laughs> oh! <laughs> See, it's, what? it's people like Hayley, Hayley. who ha- make me confident that I'm keeping this car. <laughs> Hayley, what you... is a moth anyway? <laughs> what? Doesn't matter. You didn't. Wait, even... wait, wait, wait. Keep her on the phone. What, what was Did her she, question? She just asked, what is a moth anyway? No, oh. as in, like, not not what is one, but the. Is it an what insect? Where does it come from? Who cares? You didn't get the answer right. You're not getting oh. the car. Hey. Well, you don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, definitely don't ask me because I left school at 15. I don't, uh, I'm not giving you any help at all. I'd say a moth is definitely an insect. Why no, would it be? Because an insect has six legs and so a moth only moth. has two. No, moth, moths don't walk up, right? Moths completely lack self awareness. That's all I'm going to uh, say. They're always flying got, around annoying got, me in my house. I've okay. only got four. Okay, legs. good. So I get to keep my car there. No, you don't. We're going to do another one because she was rubbish. Yay, Sally! No offense to her. Hello. Full offense. Welcome to the show. Are you ready to have a go at nine and ten? Yes. Sally, right. do you have an accent there? Do I have a what? Oh, did you? Oh, sorry. I thought you had an American accent there. Sally, your no, topic. No. <laughs> when you're ready to go, name nine American cities. Go. Uh, New York, <laughs> California, Not a city. Mississippi, <laughs> Illinois, Chicago. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Savannah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Savannah. Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, I am so sorry you are not successful in winning yourself a brand new run to the Honda this afternoon, but thank you okay. so much for Thanks trying. Thanks for playing. We hey. really appreciate it. So good oh. news, Clint is not walking to work tomorrow. I love how this is a speed test and all the people have had have just been going as slowly and as carefully <laughs> as possible. It's time for New Zealand's favourite low-cost game show. Win. Clint's. Car. Yeah. Welcome know. back to the show. The show that no one really likes, or everyone likes except for Clint, I should say. So the the <laughs> car's just gone on our Guy, Sharon and Clint Facebook page. Yeah. And I've been out of love with Rhonda for a long time. Like, I still need her. I still need a car. You talked a lot of crap about Rhonda. People people want her. And it's funny how it changes your, your feelings towards things. Now that people want my car, I'm like, oh, maybe it is a cool car. Maybe I do want to keep it. Don't well, it always seem to go that you don't know what, what you've got, got till it's gone. gone. Johnny Babe. Mitchell never lies, lies, lies. <laughs> what? I was in the Q-tip Jen Jackson remix. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry I about we were that. Talking about paving parking Let's get lots. this over with. Let's get this over with. If you want, we've had a rough start to nine out of ten. Basically, you've got to say nine answers in ten seconds, and you will win Clint's car, Ronda. So let's get Yay. our first caller on the line. This is Serena. a li- a third caller. Sorry. Hello. Hi, Serena. Serena how are you? Hi. <laughs> You ready to win Clint's car? I hope so. <laughs> Do you have a car at the moment? Um, not particularly mine, but it's my partner's. Dang, so now you have two cars. You'll be rolling sweet. <laughs> Come on, Serena. You can do this. Serena. <laughs> give her a topic so she can screw it up and leave. Serena? Yeah. When I say the answer, you get when I say the, the topic, you get going, all right? Serena, okay. your topic is name nine New Zealand cities. Go. Wellington, Christchurch, Dunedin, Auckland, Gisborne, Hamilton, Hastings, Invercargill, 
Um, Capo. Did she just get there? I think that she did. did are, they, are they all qualified as cities? No, they're towns. We're going to have to deliberate. Wait, no, Taupo's a city. We're going to have to deliberate. It's a city if it's over 20,000 people. I I actually feel real bad about this. This is a disaster. We've got to add to something like that. We need need to to talk about this off off air. You said to me me that they would be hard enough that no one could win it. I didn't actually (laughs) think anyone could win this. So we're not sure. We're not sure. New Zealand cities. Yeah, New Zealand cities. New Zealand cities. Yeah. (laughs) Cities in New Zealand. We are going to uh, deliberate and check off of each of the things that Serena said was a city. If this they is a are disaster. In, if they are in fact How do we get a car to Wellington? We've got to go off here. <laughs> what about my car? Ladies and gentlemen, please just let us deliberate for a while. I'm going to... Hopefully Clint doesn't punch me. We're going to sort this out and uh, we'll be back with very, with very shortly. Serena, just wait there. We're going to fact check for you, Bloody okay? Hell. And you may be the proud owner of a new Honda. If not, we've got two other people on the line. If you're just tuning into the oh. show... Wait, wait. We can't play the game without our amazing intro music. Do you still... You re, in, in a moment this series, I feel still like the yeah. intro music. Oh, yeah, we do, guys. Come on. We spent ages on this. Okay. It's time for New Zealand's favourite low-cost game show. Win. Clint's. Car. Yay! <laughs> if, you're, if you're just tuning in, we've, we've come up with a segment. We came up with it yes, last, yesterday on air. The idea was to copy a Paul Henry stunt where he's giving away a, a nice car, and we decided, well, me and Shazdog did, that we'd give away... Our friend Clint's car Because he always complains about it anyway And so it's not worth much money you told me that the questions you would ask Would be hard enough that no one will ever get it Yeah It's, it's day two And no, we're no, on the verge No, no, no can, I just, can we just go back and just Let's just rewind here We had two callers on Who were shockingly bad Yes They both were very slow Like they literally did three And I was like This is getting ridiculous It's, it's, it's too hard to win <laughs> I've got to make it a bit closer uh. This person was Basically got there. Do we have a replay of the audio? Yeah, Serena's yes, here. Serena, hello. God. We'll come to you in one second. This is what went down just a minute ago. Name nine New Zealand cities. Go. Wellington, Christchurch, Dunedin, Auckland, Gisborne, Hamilton, Hastings, <laughs> and the Cargo. One more. Um, Did she just get there? So that is what happened a few minutes ago with Serena. Serena, welcome back to the show. Hi. We have uh, had to take this out of our hands because Guy and I just want to give away this car so <laughs> badly. Serena, it hasn't been real to me until it was potentially gone, and my, <laughs> I feel really bad now because I don't want to give you my car. Do you really <laughs> want? Do you really want this car? Yeah, I really want it. <laughs> I've never won anything. Well, before. Ron, Ronda the Honda could potentially be going to a new place. We have got Chang in, who has been to the bosses. And Chang, what's happened? Well, you know that audio you just heard yeah. uh, of Serena on air with all the cities named. Yeah. We have to slow it down to make sure we fact check everything. Mm. Come you on, do not Chang. sound reliable. No, 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 me, me and management we have done it. Like we have to go on over and over and over it. Unfortunately. There is one incorrect answer. Taupo uh, is not a city. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Oh, Ronda rides again. So the car is still up for grabs. Oh, Serena, how do you feel about that? No, I'm gutted. <laughs> what, which one was it? Was it Taupo? Yeah, it was yeah. Taupo. Taupo. Oh. <laughs> oh, babes. What, is, what is Taupo, anyway? It's is this not, a, tra- it's a town. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm actually a little bit re- 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 revealed. I felt a bit sick that we we're giving away Clint's car and I was going to have to probably lend him mine or you something. You were so. such a liar. You were just as excited <laughs> as I was. <laughs> Serena, sorry we can't give you a car today, but we will put you in the draw to go and see Beyonce live in London and we'll hook you up with a couple of other prizes as well, okay? Not a car. Okay, no. thank you. Yeah, later, oh, sucker. guys, I just feel really, it's... really good about how close we were to this. <laughs> I just want to take a vote around the room. Who votes for two more callers? No. No, no, no. no, come, no, on, no. come on. Hey, we, okay, we... Another day. I, th- I feel like the oh. prize jackpot's for another. We can't do it today. I've I've had too much adrenaline for one day. Okay, I need to okay. calm down. Guys, new prize. Stress me out. New prize tomorrow. tomorrow. Ronda the Honda. And you get everything that's inside it, like Clint's shoes, his seat covers, <laughs> his stereo. Piss off. Everything. <laughs>
Jai, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Big day in New Zealand um, today with Lord arriving back in the country after the Grammy, so big day for New Zealand music. Not just Lord though, um, achieving things music-wise in the news today. Um, there's also news about another prominent New Zealander who has had um, some chart success. All of a sudden, he's popped up in the number two position in Australia <laughs> in what's called the ARIA charts. Do you guys remember this song? I already know what this is. Now I can hear it. <laughs> It'll come to you. Long intro, guys. <laughs> Talk over it. Here it comes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, shit. My movie like a gypsy. Stop. Oh, back it up now. Let me see your hips. So, so everybody remembers Savage, right? Yeah. Who could forget? This song came out like almost, what, like... Ages, ages ago. Ages ago, like eight years ago or something. So someone is... What they've done is they've done a dance... They've done a dance remix to Swing. Gosh. And Australians are absolutely lapping it up. And it's jumped from, like, uh, somewhere on the chart. It's it's the second biggest song in their whole country at the moment. He's going to be dining off Swing forever. Dining was a bad term there. This is the first time <laughs> Savage has been back in the chart since um, him and his rap crew made the stage collapse at... Uh, Canterbury orientation that time. Did that happen? Yeah, a whole stage collapse one time. <laughs> oh <laughs> so they had to God. cancel the orientation gig. They do have a huge crew. When he raps, it's so awesome. He has like 20 guys on yeah, stage. Yeah, it's incredible, eh? The party was so big that they broke the arena. We've actually got Savage on the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the wonderful Savage! Hey. Savage. Welcome along to the show. And do you have any idea why we're calling you today? Uh, I think I am feeling. A remix of your song Swing has gone to number one in Australia. Yay! Hey, that's crazy, right? That's bigger than Lord. Well, it's bigger than Lord. Come on, man. She's overshadowing all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did this happen, Savage? Because Swing came out so many years ago and you sold mm. over a million copies of it in the States and now it's number one in Australia. Where did this remix come from? I heard the, the, the track at the time and I thought, well, man, this, this is a pretty good version. Of the remix, you know, we've done more than ten remixes to the song. So, but when I heard this one, I was like, "Well, this is pretty catchy." So, and just went platinum within six weeks of the release of the song. Is it platinum already? Yeah, so it's supposed to go double platinum, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Savage, what happens when you do when you sell the licensing over um, for like a remix? Do you get to approve the remix before they actually use it, or can they just do whatever they want? No, no, no. They, 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 they let us have a listen to it first. So that, that's why when I heard, it, I was like, "Oh, this is pretty catchy." So that's the reason why we gave the OK. Plus, in this Ministry of Sound, they know what they're doing and they don't know music. How um, how old is the song now? How long ago did Swing actually come out? The the original. Well, Swing first came out in New Zealand in um 2005. That's ages ago. That's almost 10 years ago. Yeah, this is the third life that has been driven to crazy, man. And it's it's still making bank for Savage. That's massive. Yeah, man, the chicks still keep coming in. You, you've just got to think up a, a ringtone and maybe some hats and an iPhone app and you'll be <laughs> sorted for the rest of your life. Oh, exactly. Like, you know... I'm just turning like a monkey in a tree, just swinging away, mate. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, congratulations, Savage. We just wanted to ring and give you a, a call to congratulate you on going to number one in Australia with Swing. So, well done. Huge congratulations, bro. Nice shot, man. Thanks for coming, was, it, was that the whitest send-off you've ever had? Oh, that's crazy, bro. Great job, mate. See you later. Bye, Savage. Ladies and gentlemen. Do, um, do you guys actually want to hear the song? Let's, I no, want to hear the track now. We've talked about it so much. This is the version of Swing, which has gone to number two in Australia. Check it out. See what you think. It's the Joel Fletcher Ministry of Sound remix. You can flick us a text, too, and a phone call on 0800 The Edge. Let us know what you think of it.
The Edge. If you're wondering what that is, that's a remix of Savage's song Swing. It's um, been done by Ministry of Sound, and all of a sudden, Swing is the number two song in Australia all of a sudden. So we had Savage on, we had to chat to him about this phenomenon that's happening to him at the moment, and I thought, well, we can't not play the song, so you, can, so you, you, you need to hear it. You need to hear what's going on. In my opinion, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Prefer the original? Yeah, yeah. way prefer it. But, okay. Gareth, what do you think? You know, I really like it, eh? Yeah? What do you like about yeah. it? I just got beat, and it's different for Savage. So, um, I, on a Friday night, if you drop that, I think it would just be real good to get along to. Kiwis love Savage, eh? I saw him at, um, at Homegrown. His, his crowd was probably one of the biggest crowds of the whole day last year. Kiwis love Savage. I wonder if he ever regrets saying, can you please give it up for Savage? <laughs> because now everybody says that all the time. Like, I'm surprised we didn't introduce him that way. Oh yeah, all the time. I'm just saying, can I? You please give it up to Savage. Ever? No, I but go. Like, if you were if you were <laughs> interviewing him or you were introducing him to something, people always introduce him that way. The fa- that famous way. Jamie, your thoughts on the song? She's gone. Um, You're a dick. Oh, the majority <laughs> I'm a bit of the feedback on Sorry the song, that, mate. largely positive. So maybe we'll see Savage go to number one in New Zealand as well, or at least number yeah. one in Australia. We've championed it. I think I, just make that other one the, the original number one again. I think we should remix a song, by the way. If it's if, if if you can grab an old song and go to number two, we could get rich off this. Yeah, get bring back Die Hamo, Die Hamo, eh? Is that his name? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's Very everybody's much. cousin. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the urge. Sharon's on the phone to her husband. Did you guys hear her no, hanging I was, up? I wasn't. Yeah. I was talking to our boss. <laughs> this is <laughs> unprofessional to say. I wasn't always. talking to... My, uh, what? Welcome you, back. You've set the precedent. I'm going to be chatting to babes next time. <laughs> no, I was talking well. to our boss. <laughs> I wasn't right. talking to my husband. The story I wanted to bring up to you guys, I thought it was quite interesting. On stuff.com.au today, they <laughs> announced that the... Uh, now you're texting. Well, I'm, this is so rude. <laughs> this is so rude. They had announced that the <laughs> Queen's... Uh, who am I to say what's rude or not, eh? The rudest dude in the world. Oh, you're stopping during a story. It's so rude. You should be on phone ban. Um, actually, for your information, the person I was texting is the person that's trying to get Margot Robbie on our show. Put your phone down and listen to guys. Oh, I don't well, believe so my you. body normally has shit stories. You're Make a, it a good slippery, one, mate. You're a sleep refer- No, I was just bringing up that the Queen has oh. been declared that she's only got one... I was going to say declared bankrupt. Not that, but she's she's uh-huh. bordering on broke. And when I say broke, her, the royal fund is down to $1 million. $1 million. $1 she's million. down to wow. her last mill. Really? Yeah. Why that, doesn't she sell some jewels or some art or something? I, I think it's amazing. She could sell some jewels. That's what I was wondering. I was like, how can we get her finances? I up? saw this story, and yeah. it's it's quite bad because it's it paints the royal family. You instantly stop looking at them as this like this regal exemplar of no. what uh, the, a royal family should be. Apparently, they're so broke that the Buckingham Palace is leaking when it yeah. rains. Buckingham Palace leaks and the servant slaves have to go around and put buckets next to all the priceless artworks. Oh my god. They're not these awesome people. They're white trash inbred people <laughs> who can't get a job and it really annoys me. But you do, do remember also that like she's elderly and the pension isn't very much. <laughs> True. Like my grandma used to struggle to, to keep her heat pump going her in the winter. Her pension every year the Queen receives 31 million pounds from taxpayers, from normal people. 31 so million pounds. So she has to wait, wait yeah. a whole another year to get another 31 million. Yeah. So and she so- she gets every year the amount the, that Lotto has ever given away in, in New Zealand. So yeah. our biggest lottery prize, she wins every single year. No, well, it's 62 million New, uh, New Zealand dollars oh as well. It's God. even more. It's crazy. So Buckingham Palace has suggested that they open it up more days a year, right? And that's only open up 78 days a year. Mm. I reckon that's a, not a bad idea. I reckon go, go further than that. Introduce webcams. Webcams into your, your subscription service. <laughs> Why doesn't she start doing, tw- get Twitter and start doing Twitter plugs and get paid for get her tw- tweets? <laughs> <laughs> she could get, she could, she could pay for her tweets. What or, would she plug? Corgis. Yeah. <laughs> this delicious beef and kidney meat for my corgi is the best. It makes his coat look lovely. That's hashtag actually, dog life. Hashtag the queen. <laughs> yeah. That's what the Pope does. The Pope has a Twitter. I wouldn't be surprised if he like plugs some crucifixes or something like or, that. Or, come on guys, <laughs> the best way that the royals can make money? Harry sex tape. Yeah, another good idea. Another oh, good idea. that's I, a good one. I was thinking she could um, rent her crown out. Yep. To like hen's nights or something that's like that. True. Imagine that. If you're having a hen's night, you're about to get married and you're wearing the Queen's crown. It'll be off the hook. Or you could sell um, baby George on the black market. <laughs> 
People would sell pay a, him. People would pay a lot for a prince. I reckon give baby George to to Kim Kardashian for one week, and she will make that baby millions and millions of <laughs> oh, dollars. Oh yeah, get get him. They need to get managed by Chris Jenner and have keeping up with the Buckingham Palace. A reality show is not the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Yeah. It wouldn't have to be like like you know Kardashian style insight or anything like that. Yeah. It would just have to be like a show about their life. Let's it open this up. Let's open this up on the phones. So yeah. Let's get people calling in with ideas of how the royals can make their money back. Shall we? Yes. Oh eight hundred the edge. Or text us to three three four three. Could you imagine that reality show though? Prince William being like, "Daddy, my bald spot's coming through. <laughs> Any tips?" <laughs> He'd be like, oh. <laughs> "Daddy, I want to cheat on my wife, but I'm not sure how I go about it." Oh, close to the bone. Daddy, do you think I'll get caught cheating if I carve how much I love my mistress into a tree? <laughs> I can't hear you. Just a joke. I can hear everything with these ears. Ha oh, <laughs> Flap, 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 flap. <laughs> Classic Prince Charles ears gag. Tim, what's your idea for the Royals? I reckon they should sell those gigantic fluffy hats the guards wear outside the palace every morning. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. on tra- Tramie or Eba, whatever it is in the UK. <laughs> yeah. But they, like, authentic Buckingham Palace fluffy hats. Would you buy one? Oh, probably. Depends how high the price went, eh? Yeah, well, it, they'd have to be reasonably priced. Mm. Yeah. And they could be a real cool fashion statement. Yeah. When were those hats ever a good thing to take into combat, eh? Hey? Yeah. Because even if you're, if you're in a trench, it means you're popping up and everyone can see where you're moving <laughs> no, at all times. No, if Why you, do the enemy always know, always know where we are? Probably because we're wearing these massive hats on the top of our No, because in the trenches, if you only saw the tip of it, you'd think that they were rocks. Do you think they're little grey rocks? <laughs> no, little cute little dogs. And I guess. if someone shoots you in the head, they could aim for your hat instead, and there's a whole lot of room to miss your face. Mark, Good point. your idea. What did you think we could do? Oh, cutting off our brains. Um, they could sell their prize horse, Camilla. Oh, my oh. God. Hey-oh. Hey-oh. classic gag. Shabanga. Mark. Whoop, whoop. She's got a Hey-oh. long face. Got a long face. Got a long face. Mark, that is so mean to any more, Any more gags, Mark? Mean but true. Mean but true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, that was good. I really Nailed enjoyed it. that. I, I am still <laughs> thoroughly behind. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Go on. What? Party bus with Prince Harry. <laughs> Party bus kissing booth with Prince Harry. <laughs> <laughs> These are all great ideas. The text machine is blowing up. I say that every time, don't I? She, yeah, it, it actually has some great ideas here. She could sell her prize horse, Camilla Parker Bowles. I've already had that one. Just tell her to go go on the dole, sell the Falklands to China, oh. become the world's biggest drug dealer. Well, that's just a good idea for anyone, really, isn't it? The world's biggest drug dealer. Claim royalties from the Lord so- Song Royals. That is an <laughs> awesome idea. <laughs> it should go to them every time. Mm. It's a shame. I mean, I hope they get back on their feet. Um, <laughs> and somebody else's text, it's a a million pounds, not a million dollars, you big idiot. Well, I said that. I oh. said that. I Take that back. I may be big and I may be an idiot, but I'm not a big... Oh, yes, I am. Yes, <laughs> you are. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Hello, Marty and Steph. Kia ora. Can I just quickly say um, that I'm very no, inspired... No, you can't say that. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I'm very inspired by this hashtag that you guys have uh, got getting old Margot Robbie on the phone. Oh, thank you. She is She's a, a babe. babe of the century. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. She was amazing on Wolf of Wall Street. Oh. I loved her on Neighbours because I'm one of the four people in New Zealand that still watch Neighbours. But um, if you want to help us... Let's get Margot Robbie on our show. Just use the hashtag, hashtag Margot Call the Edge on I Twitter. I want to look at her elbows. For you Do you want to touch her weenus? Yeah, good. <laughs> we finish the show every um, the same way every day with something uplifting, you know, to take you into the evening as a better person. And today... And gets people excited about the night show, which is good. Yeah. yeah. Everybody gets yeah. so inspired. And then you guys talk and you're like, damn... <laughs> Today is my opportunity. <laughs> and today's Wind Beneath Your Wings comes from none other than Buddha. Buddha. Is um, that your uncle, Steve? Yeah, I'm related to him. <laughs> He's my last name. Great gag, la- guys. My last name's Monk. Shh, I want to be inspired. <laughs> He's my uncle. In the end, only three things matter. How much you loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go of things not meant for you. Buddha. You can actually kind of like remix that and just like how gently you loved and you know they could, they're all applied to each love other. Love her great. tender. Love how gracefully her. you let things go that do not apl- matter to you. I think that's really good. I'm going to hold on to that one. Uncle Buddha, nice. what a great guy. If you go to the Lord Show tonight, see it, Uncle <laughs> Buddha. Are you guys talking about Buddha? Is that the same person? Thanks so much for listening to the show. <laughs> see you at Lord. Goodbye. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. There you go. There was a podcast. Thank you for joining us on another edition of the podcast. I'd just like to add one more time. Really stoked that I don't have to walk home today. Yeah. Yes. Thank God the car survived. Better than the car...
being given to a stranger. Although you would have been able to drive it home tonight if we had given it away because she was in Wellington. So, But I feel like I'm going to give my steering wheel a hug when I get in the car and truly appreciate my car for the first time in years. Well, don't don't um, don't get it dirty because <laughs> You're not we've, giving already, it away. we've already said that You're not giving it away. we're blue litter and everything's in good order. <laughs> I, um, I'm glad we opened the show with IC Fire. If you're listening to the radio show, another <laughs> IC Fire opening, which is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening. Please uh, rate us and like us on uh, on the interwebs or something. I don't know how that works. <laughs> See you guys. The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast.